we want to make sure we have sound, don't we? And the way to do that would be to turn this guy on and see if we have sound, which <coughs> we really do. Hi, this is Gary Fong, and in this video I want to talk about preserving your image files through to the completion of your professional job. Now, the options for storing and, and keeping our files have just gone exponential. We've got cloud storages like Dropbox or Picasa or Flickr, uh, even Facebook. We've got the ability to buy massive amounts of memories, multiple terabyte hard drives for, you know, in the uh, lower hundreds of dollars. So we have got so many choices and so many places to put our files, it gets a little bit crazy. And now more than ever, we need to discuss how to safely preserve your files so that you can deliver your contract to your client. Once you deliver them to your client and your uh, obligation is fulfilled, then of course you don't need to worry about them anymore. So I want to start off by telling you what is the most effective backup source, foolproof, guaranteed all the time, and that is your original card. Your original card should be kept pristine until the job is completed and delivered. And the reason that is, is because copying from a card to a drive, to another drive, can be imperfect. There can be sometimes, and you've seen it yourselves when you try to open a file, it said this file cannot be opened because it is corrupt or damaged. That is okay if you can go back to the other card and recover it, but once you've wiped out that original capture card, there's no way to do that. So, the workflow would be this. Take your card, copy it onto the very first drive, and the second drive, which would be the archive just in case, oh shit drive. The drive that you copied into will be your editing drive. That drive, you'll do your Lightroom, your raw processing, whatever it is, because you're going to be actually using those files. And if a file comes up and can't be used, it'll tell you it can't be used, and then you go back to your original file, go grab it and pull it and put it in. If you want to say copy to your drive and then hand verify that each one would be able to be open. That would take you a long time if you've got a thousand, two thousand files to do. And that'd be a really redundant waste of time. So go ahead and copy those into your drive, working drive. Work with it. If anything pops up saying that it's not visible, then you go back to your original drive. Now, I found that it's extremely important to label your drives. I label all of my drives with a two uh, letter code, A, B, A, Z, BQ, whatever it is, this gives me a lots of different files and I always keep them in order so that I know. When I shoot an event, I pull these cards out and I uh, use them and I put them as part of the media library for that event. Once I'm done with that event, those cards go into an envelope, into my active working file and they stay there until the obligation is completed. I've delivered the high-risk files, I've delivered the prints of the albums, whatever it is. Now, why do I want to put letters on the cards? Well, also, it's very important to have letters on them because you want to make sure that you know whose images are whose when you have a second shooter. And I'll talk about the second shooter nightmare and how to handle files with second shooters in a very, very important video on my premium channel. And uh, there's other more extensive courses on the premium channel about digital file management, how to use my control uh, flowchart, and everything like that. But to get you going here, I want to just go ahead and explain. The workflow would be from the card to the working drive. The working drive does the uh, editing, and then you finally output. Hang on to the card and don't format it until that event is completely done, go through, grab those cards, reformat them, put them into circulation, and you've got everything very nicely organized. Now another thing that I hear photographers say is that they like to use small cards because they don't want to, uh, say for example, lose a large card because a large card would lose more images. And from my very, very long, multi-decade experience as a professional photographer, trust me, you lose one card, it's a disaster and cannot be recovered. That card might be the ceremony, that card might be Elvis landing on a spaceship, whatever is on that card, anything that you lose is bad news. And the easiest way to lose images from a card is to take that card out of the camera. You take it out of the, card, out of the camera, you scratch your head and you rub your feet on the carpet, you zap that card and the data is lost. Or you drop that card or you, uh, you're holding the card and you look at your soup and you don't like the flavor of the soup and you forgot that you dropped the card in the soup and you give this 
soup to the, uh, the, the bus person and that soup has now gone down the garbage disposal. Whatever it is, you do not want to take the card out of the very most protective compact flash or SD card carrying case ever known to man and that is the four to six pound DSLR or camera whatever you have that is holding the card. What's holding that card is a beautiful slot that has the pins connected and if you drop that uh, camera off the back of a moving freight train or whatever it'll probably roll around destroy the camera but I'll bet you anything like the black box in an airplane that card will stay preserved. So what I do is I have one card per camera, very large card, enough to hold as many images as I'd want to put on it. Makes your file management much easier. Just think about it. Three cameras, three cards. Not three cameras, 14 cards. Wait a minute. I thought I left with 14 cards. Why do I have 11? Things like that. Okay. So that's why one card per camera comes out of the camera straight into a working drive. From the working drive, it's also simultaneously copied to a backup drive. That original card goes into active storage until the event is completed at which time it's formatted okay so hope that helps lots more information coming up on my premium channel where I'll have entire courses on digital asset file management plus much more how to run your business how to run an incredible business and much more for now please remember to subscribe on my YouTube channel remember the subscribers always get first crack at additional content thanks for watching bye bye